Hello guys, welcome to another video, it's Jirobro and in today's video I'm gonna be talking about the webhooks. Now, you probably might have encountered with some of the webhooks or you actually have seen some of the webhooks questions within the Atlassian community and you're wondering to yourself how the actually the webhooks are working. Where is the whole purpose of the webhooks well the one of the purpose of the webhooks is to actually establish the communication with the applications that are outside of jura what do i mean by this for example uh, github for example salesforce for example ServiceNow. so those kind of uh, applications that I'm talking about or even your own custom applications that of course are also that that are having the feature of the webhooks as well so that is like a two-way communication between uh, between Jira and the another application as well now so how to start with the webhooks. Okay, so in order to start with the webhooks, so right now I'm going to be using uh, on Windows, it's going to be Control K, on Mac, it's going to be Command K, which brings up the command palette. And within the command palette, I'm going to type in the webhooks. And it's going to tell me, you know what, go to webhooks in here. So I have this one webhook that is created. I'm going to delete it and I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to click on create the webhook. So we are presented with the name of the webhook. What is the status? Of course, you want the status to be enabled. Also, the URL. So you're going to see what kind of URL of the webhook we're going to be using. If you're using this URL right here, well, uh, you're not doing it in a correct way. There is also a secret in here, so you won't be able to view or retrieve it once the webhook is saved. Record your secret somewhere secure. Personally, I haven't used this, so I'm going to skip this part. All right, so these are the interesting things that you, you're seeing. So you're having like Jira related events. For example, the events for when the sprint was created, when the board was created, deleted, updated, configuration changed. Or you have the other events that are related, just like issue, user, or Jira configuration related events, pro project related events. And what is interesting about the uh, webhooks themselves, you can include multiple things in here. So for example, if I want to have a webhook where basically I'm having uh, an issue that is created and I check this. Now what happens is this JQL matches all issues in all projects. Okay, so it's saying that the webhooks will send and may reveal sensitive information. So what you actually want to do basic within a webhook is you want to use it either within like let's say several pro projects or based on one project depends on what kind of information you want to get from your webhooks so what i'm going to be saying in here is i'm going to say project i'm going to say equals and i'm going to be picking this platform development because i'm i'm uh I'm someone who likes the concepts of tech when it comes to, let's say, backend, front end, but I'm the guy who doesn't know how to code. So, yeah, it's like it's like um, it's like having uh, having uh, those kind of people that are going to, you know, the uh, to spoil the movie even though they haven't watched it yet. So, don't be that guy. All right, so other things, for example, 
when I have create a comment, for example. So I want to have a webhook that is uh, being there as well. What I want when the attachment was created, for example. And all of the other things that you can actually add for your webhook. But we don't want to create our webhook just yet because if we create it like this, it's not going to do much stuff. So first of all, we're going to pick the name for the webhook. You know what? I'm going to be boring and I'm going to name it webhook. That's it. All right. So for the projects in here, first of all, notice the URL. Okay. So this is the, the first URL. This is the second URL. That's right. So from this second instance, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to I'm going to go to let's say this one this project right here I'm going to go to my project settings in here I'm going to go for the automation and you're going to see why I'm going to click on create the rule and I'm going to I'm going to type in webhook the first thing that comes in here it's going to be the incoming webhook which will actually run when an HTTP post is sent to the following URL. All right, so, and then we have a webhook URL, which is this one. What we're gonna do is we are gonna copy this URL. And when we copy it, we're gonna go back to our, our instance, which is this one, okay? It's gonna be this instance, it's gonna be this one. And then we are going to include this webhook right here. So this is going to be something that we actually want. I'm going to click on create. Okay. And now what we want to do in here. So we have three options in here. First of all, that issue provided in the webhook HTTP post body. So uh, what you're actually doing in here is the gather issues from the request itself, then issues provided by running the following JQL search, if you actually want to do this from the JQL search, and also no issues from the webhook. So I'm going to make it easier for now. Okay. And now we are interested in actually storing this information. The question is, okay, how we're we gonna store this? Now, yeah, sure, we can store this in a, uh, maybe some kind of a comment or something like that, but this is not really uh, something that we actually wanna do. So, what we are gonna do here, so I'm gonna log this. And this is going to be within my audit log. And then the question is, okay, what kind of a log message do we want to use here? So when we click on available smart values and when we go with the webhook data, it's gonna tell us the additional data, returns any additional data passed via the post body under the data key. Since we don't we don't have the data body and we, we haven't included that within our request, we're gonna be using the web hook data. And that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And we're gonna click on next and we're gonna turn on our rule and I'm going to name this web hook. Alright, turn on the rule. That's it. So, let's go back to our project. And within our project, what we're going to be doing in here is we want to create ourselves an issue. Okay, and I'm going to say that this, this is going to be named webhook. Well, since this is actually the, uh, since this is Scrum, we actually need to add this to our active sprint. Otherwise, it would actually go to the backlog. So everything is actually in there. 
and if we actually go to our audit log right here we're gonna see success for the status I really like to see the statuses of success when it comes to uh, looking at the logs uh, from the automation rules it uh, brings the relief and when you click on show more you're gonna be seeing a lot of this weird kind of looking text and there is like a bunch of information in there so there is like one thing that you actually may notice is is this one right here where it's uh, referencing on a different instance uh, it's referencing on a different instance and it's also referencing to the issue key which is this one and that is actually the exact issue key that was well created as you can see it involves a bunch of the custom fields in there as well so if we try to look for, for each of these custom fields it would take a lot of time for us to basically uh, you know to search for that other thing that is interesting like uh, it has like zero votes and has voted there is like uh, false for that and there is also the uh, API endpoint for the issue type where it's showing the uh, ID of this of this issue type which is a uh, user story so that is uh, another interesting thing and also the display name for example Mitch Davis and if that user is actually active or that user has been deactivated so it also shows that data as well so this is this is almost like when uh, you're doing the uh, yeah basically when you're doing the API call and from that API call you get this long re JSON response so this is this is it but this is like showing it in the audit log on how the webhook is being uh, recorded actually uh, so yeah that is uh, yeah that is something that uh, uh, I wanted basically you, you guys to know when it comes to uh, when it comes to the web hooks themselves uh, also also what we can actually do in here is we can look for Atlassian web hooks and we can actually uh, click here and this this is what we're actually uh, getting and also what it can what it can also do is you can register your webhook as well so this is if you wanna if you wanna use your uh, API in order to actually create your webhook where you can specify your Jira URL with the uh, with uh, the rest of the URL and this is what goes into the body of your of your request now of course there is, there is a documentation on on the events themselves that you can actually uh, add at here uh, at here as well like for example uh, comment created or something like that so and then when when you're actually done with this it uh, it basically just uh, creates the webhook it doesn't do it doesn't do anything anything too much but the documentation is actually in there you can uh, you can take a look uh, for yourself you can actually see uh, you can actually see how it works and yeah uh, it's it's really it's a really powerful feature that basically allows you to integrate uh, integrate Jira with the uh, with the external with the external services just like for example ServiceNow for example sales, Salesforce uh, for example Microsoft Teams GitHub even so yeah things like that so yeah that is everything that I wanted to talk about these about the uh, 
webhooks in this video and uh yeah don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel as well see you guys in the next video bye bye